So I absolutely love hearing from the community that I've built around this, this whole thing. Anytime somebody comes to me with a question, I have an answer here. Watch this video here. Try this here. Do this. I always have the answer. But I had a viewer come to me the other day and they asked me a question and I immediately responded with, yes, of course, you can do what you're asking to do. But then I actually had to sit back and think about it. And I was like, OK, yes, it can be done, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated than just doing it. So I had to actually sit down and work out the steps that were going to be required in order to make this happen for this viewer. At the end of the conversation, I said, Hey, you know what? This makes for a really good video. And that's this video. So basically what they were asking me is they were trying to figure out a way to make it so that a player could only enter the rust server after they've been a member in the discord server. He also added the caveat that he wanted to be able to manually grant them a role in the discord server that would then give them permission to enter the rust server. After I actually drew it all out in my head, it was actually quite simple. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that today. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful rust server. On this channel, I do plugin reviews, tutorials, plus I want to show you all the different tips and tricks you need to know to be successful at operating a Rust server. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And if you want to get notified as soon as I upload a new video, make sure you turn on that notification bell. All right, so first things first, before we get started on this, this isn't just a one drop in plugin and it's going to do this for you. Using the method that I'm going to show you today, it actually uses four different plugins in order to do what it is that we're trying to do. So let's break it down exactly what it is. Is that we're trying to do basically what we want to be doing is we want to be driving players into our discord server before they can actually get into our rust server so how are we going to do that now obviously the easiest solution is to use a plugin like whitelist what whitelist does is basically if you don't have the permission granted to be on the whitelist you're not granted access to the server now before you go out and quickly download this plugin don't. The whitelist plugin doesn't actually perform exactly the way that I would want it to in order to make this a success. Because basically what happens is, is if somebody's not on the whitelist, they cannot get into the server at all. So I've put in a request to have a change made to the plugin so that it gives you a window where a player can enter your server, find out that they need to be a member of your discord before they're going to be allowed to play on your Rust server. And then if for whatever reason they decide not to join your discord, they automatically get kicked after let's say five or 10 minutes. But when a player enters your server we have to get them that information right away as soon as they connect they need to know as soon as they log on that they need to be a member of your discord server or they're going to get kicked out of your rust server that's why i wanted to open up that window period of five or ten minutes so that they can actually join get the message go join the discord do everything that they need to do after that and then they would be added to the whitelist automatically so for today's example i decided to use a plugin called welcomer by Dana and that is available from the new mod website. So we're going to use welcomer to actually display that information for the player as soon as they join the server that they immediately need to go join your discord server or they're going to get kicked out of the rust server. And of course, because we're going to be talking between a rust server and a discord server, we need to have a way of communicating between the two. And of course, the plugin called discord core takes care of that for us. And then of course, once they're in the discord server, we need to be able to grant them a role, which is then of course going to give them the permission to get past the whitelist and actually allow them access to your rust server. So the plugin that we're going to use for that is discord roles. And obviously, because we're communicating between a discord server and a rust server, we need to have a bot that's going to actually do that communication for us. So for any of you that have been watching my channel for any length of time you know that i've done similar stuff to this in the past not quite to this extent though so when it comes to this part of setting up a discord bot i'm kind of going to glaze over that a little bit because i've gone into way more detail on other videos but you should get the general idea of what you need to do it's not complicated don't worry about it so now that i'm actually sitting down and making this video i realize that there's a lot of moving parts so i'm going to break this all up into chapters that'll be down in the video description down below so if you guys need to repeat a section feel free to go back of course and just re-watch that section all right so the first First thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a discord bot because we need information from the bot that is going to be needed in both of the discord plugins in our rust server so navigate to discord.com slash developers slash applications link in the description down below once you're here you want to click on new application we want to give this guy a name and it can be whatever you want i'm going to call this one test robot once you're actually inside the application you want to go over to the bot and we want to add a bot to this application once you're in the settings for the bot you want to scroll down a little bit you want to go to privileged gateway intense you want to toggle this on this on and this on and then we can just save this and other than customizing it a little bit giving him a new avatar whatever you're basically done with the setup of the bot but now we need to get the bot into our discord server so go to the oauth2 tab right here and then click on the url generator 
down below that. Once you're on this dot matrix right here, you want to click on this middle button right here, just says bot, and we can give this guy administrator permissions. And then it'll generate a link down below at the very bottom of the screen. We can just copy that, open up a new tab in your web browser, and just post in that link that was generated from the application portal. It's then going to ask you which server do you want to invite this bot into. Select your server from the drop down list. It's just confirming with you here that you want to actually give this bot administrator permissions. And yes, of course we do. So we can authorize that. Validate that you are actually a human. And as you can see there, my bot is now in my server. It's going to show offline because we're not actually doing anything with this bot just yet. But don't worry, once we do, it'll go online and it'll be fully functional. So I already have a bot already set up. So I'm actually going to kick this bot out. I no longer need this one. And I'm going to start referencing my previously built bot. But you can follow these exact same steps going forward on the bot that you've now created. Head back over to the application portal. And if you're at this main page, you want to click on the bot that you've just now created for your server and click on bot again on the left hand side. This token right here this is the information that we need to put into discord roles as well as discord core so if you just click on this blue button right here that says copy it's going to copy that token to your clipboard and you can then pasta that in when you need to into those two plugins. I should also point out right now that A, I'm not going to show you what my token is because this is a valid bot that I do use on a regular basis. And secondly, never share this information with anybody unless you absolutely trust them. You can quite easily get kicked or banned from being able to build bots if this gets abused in any way, shape or form. All right, so that's basically everything that we need to do with the bot. We already have all of the information that we need from him. And now we're going to start putting him to work. So if you haven't already, make sure you go download Discord Core as well as Discord Roll. Links in the video description down below. I actually just realized that I made an unfair assumption. If you've never used anything Discord related in your Rust server, you probably don't have the Discord extension yet. Anytime we're doing anything between our Rust server and our Discord server, we need to have the Discord extension installed on our server in order for any of that functionality to take place. So if you don't already have the Discord extension, make sure you go over to umod.org slash extensions and download and install the Discord extension. If you are in fact installing the Discord extension, I highly recommend you shut your your server down before you ever install any extensions and then you want to go into your rust dedicated data folder and then go into the manage folder and this is where you want to install your discord extension once you've done all that you can reboot your server and we're good to go we can start working with discord plugins now as far as discord core goes as well as discord roles we can just install those like we would any other plugin you go to oxide slash plugins and just drag and drop those files in there once you've installed the plugin you should get a warning here that says please set the discord bot token and reload the plugin basically that means the discord core is not doing anything right now because it basically has no identity. It doesn't know what bot that it's supposed to be reporting the information to. And you should get the exact same response out of Discord roles. Please enter your bot token into the configuration. So let's go deal with that. So navigate to your Oxide slash config folder this time and scroll down till you find Discord core and we want to open that up. So the very first line of the configuration file is asking for the Discord bot token. So we can post that in there. And yes, I now realize that I've just displayed my bot token on screen. So of course, I'm going to regenerate a new token once this video is done. So no, you guys can't steal my bot. Once we're done with that, we can save that and then we can go back and we might as well deal with discord roles at the same time. Open up discord roles. It's in the exact same location right there at the very top line. And we can just save that and let's reload both of those plugins. Now, this time when I reloaded discord core, it knew which bot I was talking about and it already recognized what server it was in. So as you can see here, bulls test server bot, and it says that it was found in one guild or one discord. We can reload discord roles as well and make sure that everything is running there we no longer have that warning saying I don't have your bot token. All right, so that's all good. We're all set there. As soon as you reload either one of those plugins, Discord Core or Discord Roles, that's when we start putting this bot to work and that's when the bot is actually going to appear online. So while you're at your Discord, you wanna set up the role that you want to grant to new players in order to grant them access to your server. So we go into our server settings, we go into roles, and I've just added a role called Game Verified. You can call this whatever you want. You can change your colors. You can do whatever you need to do. I do suggest that you make it so that these these names are displayed separately from all of the other ones. That way, you know who's verified to be in your server and who isn't. Now, what we need from this role, once you have it created, is we need to know what this role ID is. So you right click on the role and it should say copy ID right here. If you don't have that functionality, that means you don't have your Discord in developer mode. So to do that, you click on the gears next to your name in the bottom left hand corner and you want to go down to the advanced tab. And you want to make sure you have this toggle turned on right here obviously developer mode. Once you have developer mode toggled on, you can of course go back to the roles and we can right click on the game verified role or whatever it is that you called it in your case. And then we can copy that ID. So now what do we do with that role ID? Well, of course, we go back over to our configuration files and we go into discord roles. 
So other than the bot token that we've now added to Discord roles, I haven't changed anything on this configuration file. So let's scroll down till we get to the first role selection. I think there's default two. Yeah. So there's a default group and a VIP group. Those names don't matter. We're going to change that up anyways. And let's just post it in that role group that we took from the Discord server. So this is the role ID for the game verified role in the Discord server. So now what is the server group going to be called that we're going to allow to play on our server? So what server group are we going to whitelist? Let's just for simplicity reasons, let's just call this whitelist. So the Rust server group that is going to be whitelisted is also called whitelist. You can literally name it whatever you want, but you have to make sure that you create that in game as well as granting the whitelisted permission to that group. And then the next option that we need to deal with is where do we want to sync that information from? By default, this is set up to sync from the server, but we actually want it to be synced from the Discord server. So we're gonna change that from server to Discord just like that. Now, technically, we're done with this. We do need to remember what this group is called that we've now created because we haven't created it in the Rust server yet. We've just told this configuration file that that's the server group that we're looking for. So of course, this would be the responsible time to go create that server group. Now I'm using better chat for my group manager. You can just use oxide groups. It will work exactly the same way. But if you haven't introduced yourself to better chat yet and its method of managing groups, I highly suggest you do that. I've actually done a video on it. All right, so in our server console, we're gonna do chat group add whitelist successfully added the group called whitelist. So now earlier I told you not to download this plugin. I am going to actually download this plugin and show you the functionality of what it is that we're making it do, but this isn't the version that I want you to download. I'll be putting a link in the video description down below to the one that I want you to use because it's going to be a lot easier. And don't get me wrong, I understand how convoluted this all seems right now. All right, so now that you have whitelist installed, you want to go in and grant the permission to that group called whitelist that we've just now created. So of course, I prefer to use permissions manager because it's free and it does a really good job so let's go into all groups and let's go into this whitelist server group and we want to grant the permission whitelist.allow simply by clicking on the granted button right there so now anybody that is in the group called whitelist is going to be whitelisted and granted access to the server i can see now that i probably should have used a different name there because now it's going to get confusing let's recap real quick so what have we done so far we've created a server group called whitelist which i should have changed it to something else we've now told discord role that anybody that has a specific role in our Discord server is automatically going to be added to the group called whitelist in our Rust server, which then of course is going to grant them access to the server because that group is now whitelisted. Okay, so this is the problem with the whitelist plugin as it currently sits right now. Basically, at no point in time can anybody that's not already whitelisted access your server. So if they can't get into your server, how are they supposed to know that they need to join your Discord server in order to be allowed access to your Rust server? So that was the change that I requested to be made to the plugin and it is in the works i'm actually expecting it any minute now so hopefully by the time this video is out that plugin version is available because you don't want somebody coming to your server and seeing exactly what's on my screen right now you are not whitelisted therefore you're not allowed into this server that's not what you want you want people to come into your server for a specified amount of time maybe five minutes maybe ten minutes but it's enough time where you can display the information to them hey you need to join this discord server or you're going to get kicked out in a couple of minutes so hopefully you guys can see why I suggested making that change. Obviously, the mission at hand here is to drive players from your Rust server into your Discord server. Obviously, I'm a member of this Discord server already because it's mine. But once the player has actually joined your Discord server, they have to link their Discord and your Rust server. So that's where Discord core comes in. It allows the linking of the player to the Discord server. So the commands for doing that, if you just do slash DC, it's going to tell you everything that you need to do. So I'm going to show you what actually happens in real time, what happens when you're doing these things in game. So you want to get your player to do slash DC join, and then they need to put in their discord name, their full discord name and a hashtag and their discord number. So it looks just like this. I know that might be a little bit small for you guys, but you get the gist of it. So once I hit enter, I'm actually going to get a private message in my discord from the discord bot that we set up earlier. And so in game, it says our bot, blah, blah, blah. The bot's name has sent you a discord direct message. Please finish your setup in there. So if we go over to our DMS, you can see that the bot did actually message me and the bot says hey you want to link your Rust server with your discord and of course they just click on accept and that's all done 
and that's finished. So now the player's Rust account is now communicating with the Discord server. And there's a whole plethora of different things that you can do once you actually have that capability. That's not what this video is about, but just know that there is a lot more that you can do with this than what we're doing today. So now the player is in your Discord server. They've linked their game with their Discord. You're all set to go. Now you can grant them the role in the Discord that they need so that they can be whitelisted on your Rust server. So just like you would grant any other role, you right click on their name, go down to roles. And in this case, we're using game verified and you're going to see this happen. You should see it happen fairly quickly. It says in game chat Spectre has been added to the server group whitelist. So now because I was manually granted that permission in the Discord server, I'm now whitelisted in the Rust server. And of course, if for whatever reason you decided you wanted to remove that role from that player, you can just do the exact same thing. And then in game chat, it says Spectre has been removed from the server group whitelist. Therefore, I'm no longer whitelisted on this server and I won't be able to join this server again once I leave. So now obviously this is kind of a bit of an extreme type situation. You don't normally want to be able to prevent players from getting into your server. I mean, that's what this is all about, right? Is growing a population. Now I understand the reason why this viewer asked for this because another part of this business is actually creating a community around your Rust server. And the easiest way to build a community is to build your Discord. So I can definitely see the desire to drive people into your Discord server. I just don't know how I feel about preventing them from actually joining your Rust server in the process. That's just my opinion though. So the one last thing that I said that we needed to do was actually display this information for the player when they can actually join the server. So I said earlier that we were going to use welcomer by Dana. I've actually changed my mind because I don't know that you can add custom messages to welcomer or not. And I'm not going to try and figure that out while I'm recording this video. So I do know that we can use welcome messages to accomplish that goal. I'm going to download welcome messages. Of course, I'm going to install that into my plugins folder. And because I have plugin watchers turned off, I have to reload the plugin. So to customize the messages that we want welcomer to actually display to our players, we're going to go into the lang folder and then English and then scroll down to welcome messages. There we go. This is where we can actually create the messages that we want to display to the player so that they know that they have to join the discord. Plus they need to link their game with the discord. So after having made changes to the lang file, I disconnected from my server. I reconnected to the server so that I could show you this. This is what the welcome messages will actually display to your player so that they know which discord they have to join and what linking steps they need to take in order to link their game with the Discord server, your Discord server that they've now just joined. And because I was manually granted the role in the Discord, you should be able to go in and see the whitelist permission. And as you can see here, I don't have it specifically granted to myself, but it is inherited from over here from the group called whitelist. Because I was granted the role in Discord, it added me automatically to the server group called whitelist, which has this permission granted to it. So now going forward, as long as I never lose that role in the Discord, I will always be granted access to the server. So what all have we done today. We've installed the Discord extension. We installed Discord core, Discord roles, some sort of welcome message to display the information to the player, and we've installed whitelists. So it's five different things that we did on this video just to accomplish this one task. While yes, it might seem complicated, it does seem like there's a lot of steps involved, but you can definitely see the potential here to drive players directly to your Discord before they start setting up camp on your server. Now, one other thing that I needed to make clear before I let you guys go is this process of granting roles to each individual player is going to get tiresome, especially once you have hundreds of players coming through your Discord. You don't want to have to manually grant that permission to them every time a new player joins your Discord server. So you're going to want to automate this process. I suggest using some sort of a role bot such as Yag PDB or something like that so that the player comes to your Discord server, they simply react to something and then it automatically gives them that role. You don't want to have this process done manually forever. Trust me, you don't want that. But when you're first getting started up, there's no reason why you can't manually grant this role so that you're all good to go testing and making sure that everything is working correctly. But once you're up and running and confident, you're going to want to automate that for sure. And there's lots of different options out there. YAG PDB is just the first one that came to the top of my head. There's plenty of options out there to automate the role process from your Discord server. All right, I know this one was a little bit longer than maybe what you're used to seeing in the past. There's a lot of different information in this video. Like I said before, make sure you grab the chapters so if you have to repeat a section you can just quickly go back to it really easily i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope somebody finds this useful i'm taking a big gamble on this type of a video i've never done a combination video like this in the past i hope you guys like this video 
Again, like I said before, this suggestion came from the community. It came from you guys, the viewers. So if you'd like to test my abilities to see if there's something that I can come up with, some kind of a solution for a problem that you might have on one of your servers, make sure you let me know. You guys know that I'm sitting here on my phone. As soon as the video launches, I'm answering comments as quickly as I possibly can for as long as I possibly can. So put your suggestions out there. Let me know what you guys need to see. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.